now that the brand new iconic tier system has finally been fully revealed for rise of kingdoms today i'm going to update my complete equipment guide not only are we going to cover the best upgrade progression from the very beginning of the game all the way to the very end game but we're also going to go over all of the different iconic tiers and all their bonuses and i'm going to be giving you guys my opinions as to which pieces you should be focusing on increasing the iconic level of first and we're going to be doing this for all three troop types so this video might be a little bit long so get comfortable grab a snack grab a drink and what's going on guys cheers first we're going to start with infantry but i know that you guys are going to ask me what program that i'm using here to organize my different thoughts i'm literally just using the rock battle simulator i'll have a link to it in the description below starting off with relatively new players this is the set of equipment that you should be focusing on obtaining first everything here is blue except for the legs and good news I know that this purple piece, if you're a brand new player, it's going to feel like it takes forever to get the Kurox humility, let alone with the special talent. But just as a little bit of foreshadowing, this Kurox humility here is the best purple piece for infantry in the entire game. And you're probably, once you craft this with the special talent, you're going to be using that deep into the end game. And I'll explain why in just a little bit, but everything here should be relatively easy to come by and you will get it eventually. As you can see, we have 13 and a half percent infantry attack attack 6% infantry defense and 28% infantry health which is beautiful from there I would focus on getting the gloves and the boots to purple and that's going to change the stat breakdown to 21% for both defense and health 8% attack the cool part about the chest and the headpiece here this is the windswept set and by keeping these two blue pieces you're going to get a little bit of nice March speed bonus as well which infantry definitely needs so that's why you upgrade these a little bit later but eventually though you will replace the windswept chest and headpiece with the purple pieces now these two pieces they have a bad reputation okay because you can see the buffs here they shift heavily towards infantry attack and that's not necessarily the best stat to have but because you're getting significantly more stats with the special talent on both of these they are going to perform better than the windswept helmet and chest so eventually you will make your way towards this and you'll notice here that we are not replacing the weapon with the purple sakura fubuki that is because it gives you a significant amount of infantry attack and contrary to popular belief that's not a bad thing in fact the talented sakura fubuki performs about maybe one percent or half a percent better than the blue gatekeeper shield but it is so much more expensive that it is literally not even worth it's not even worth it okay the differences are basically negligible there's so many other variables in the game that matter more than that so when people say that the blue shield is better than the purple sword it's actually not it's basically as good for a fraction of the cost and that's why everyone says use the blue shield I also say that I feel like that's the best strategy. Just use the blue shield from here. You actually want to replace your helmet and chest piece. Again, those are the two weakest links of this set. You're going to replace the helmet with the set piece helmet, and you're going to replace the chest with actually the hope cloak, which you can get from the crystal keys. It's a very free to play friendly piece. And now that we have this new iconic upgrade system, it's even more important to have free to play friendly pieces in your equipment slots. Okay. Cause it's going to take a lot of time to get these blueprints to upgrade to all the different iconic tiers later down the line. Now, moving forward with the legendary pieces, I'm going to assume that you don't have the talent on them. Okay. Because there's just no way to guarantee that. And now that we have the iconic system in the game, you're probably going to be progressing through the iconic system first before you progress through the refinement system because the refinement system is random the iconic system is not so that is unfortunate now i will just say as a side note if you are 75 percent of the way towards a refinement and a special talent meaning that you are one refinement away from getting the special talent guaranteed then i would still probably do that as opposed to starting to progress through the iconic system just get your 30 percent bonus stats it's going to give you more iconic base stats as well but for everybody else like uh it's kind of a it's kind of a sunk cost okay from here i would actually recommend replacing the boots with your set boots and eventually you're going to actually replace the gatekeeper shield with the shield of the eternal empire now i know what you're thinking yes the golden shield does perform better than the blue gatekeeper shield again if the sakura fubuki with talent and the gatekeeper shield with talent perform approximately the same with the slight 
technically slight, very statistically insignificant, slight advantage going towards the Sakura Fubuki. Then of course, a piece that has 3% more attack than the Sakura Fubuki will be statistically better. However, I would replace the boots before you replace the weapon. First of all, because it's cheaper to craft. Second of all, you can get an iconic crystal in the boots and that's going to give you just more base stats. Really important stuff. Finally, you are going to eventually replace the gloves. And the reason that you replace the gloves last is because they have the same amount of stats as the talented purple gloves. The only difference being that it's a set piece and now you have the four piece set bonus and the four piece set bonus is 10% infantry March speed, which is huge. Okay. Now the two piece set bonus that you're going to get first from the helmet and the boots, that's 3% defense. It's nice. But the four piece set bonus is 10% March speed, which is massive. You can also put an iconic crystal here, and that's going to give you three more base attack points. And then when it comes to replacing the Karak humility with the eternal Knight, even when you have the eternal Knight with an iconic crystal in it, it's going to perform about the same as the Karak humility, maybe even slightly worse. If I'm being completely honest with you. So you really only want to replace the Karak humility with a special talent with the eternal Knight If you can immediately add an iconic crystal to it and even better would be if you can bring it to iconic two or iconic three pretty much right away because that's when it's really going to be an upgrade that's why the eternal knight is the pretty much the last piece for a full legendary set now at this point you would start to focus on upgrading the iconic tiers of these pieces of equipment which we're going to talk about in a second but eventually your pieces are going to look like this at the very very end game like late 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 years from now end game you're going to get the special talent on everything but if you are a massive whale and you are a rally or garrison leader then this set actually changes a little bit and the way that it changes is that you're going to have the kvk helmet with the talent and the kvk hammer with the talent the reason for this is because first of all more stats second of all you're losing the four piece set bonus but that's for March speed, which you don't care about for garrisons or for rallies really. Right. And so you would much rather have significantly more stats. And also these two pieces, the helmets and the, the weapon, when you're progressing them through the iconic system, gain more benefits, right? Because they're a higher level item, they're level 50 items, right? So it's just a better choice. Now that's the whale route. There is actually a fr more free to play friendly route. If you do not think that you're ever going to get here with all these like set pieces and everything like that with the iconic upgrade system it's actually a little bit more forgiving to work on some of the pieces that you typically would stray away from you could go for this now the reason that you would do the sacred grips and shio's return is because well shio's return you can get from the lost canyon shop and that's something you can get 30 fragments of every single kvk for free now it will be you know hard to get these as a free-to-play player but it's guaranteed to happen also you could get the sacred grips from the crystal keys as well right actually for these pieces you can get from crystal keys which means the more blueprints complete blueprints that you're getting the more you can level them up in the iconic system which is going to be really important the downside of going this route as free to play is that you lose the four piece set bonus which means you're losing 10 percent march speed for infantry which is significant in my opinion so really like you can go this route if you have like a ton of these blueprints saved up and you can really push that iconic system really significantly but i would recommend going the four piece set route if you can now let's take a look at the iconic upgrade progression for infantry okay in the green here we have what i would consider the best in slot for open field fighting again if you are a rally or garrison lead or you're a mega well then you can go for the hammer of sun and moon and helm of the conqueror those will perform better but you're gonna have less march speed so you know if you're a well you probably don't care about that because you're gonna anyone who hits you you're gonna win anyway right so like that's something to consider but i'm making mainly making this video for the majority of people who would probably rather have the march speed because that matters a lot to infantry now i know you're looking at a massive spreadsheet table here okay it's very simple you could see here this is the base stats that you get just from crafting the weapon or item or whatever without a special talent okay i'm assuming that you don't have a special talent here tier one this basically tells you um this top piece is one bp that's one blueprint okay how many blueprints does it take to get that and just the one right because it's just the one blueprint that you needed to craft the item getting to tier one iconic requires just an iconic crystal and gold tier two would require a total of two blueprints right because it's one to craft the item a second to upgrade from tier one to tier two 
tier three costs three total blueprints tier four you know as you go on you can see the total cost there okay now one thing you'll note here is that if you look at something like the hope cloak versus the plate of the eternal empire right that is the set piece versus the piece you can get from the crystal key same thing with the gloves same thing with the legs all of the bonuses that they get are actually identical okay no matter what all the bonuses are the same the only time that they are different is when you're comparing a set piece to a kvk piece that's when you're going to see that the kvk piece is just slightly better okay which makes sense it's going to cost more to upgrade it so like you would expect that to be the case and also you're going to get blueprints of it in theory less frequently because they're kvk pieces they're expensive i want to point out a couple of things here for the chest piece for your hope cloak right the after you get to iconic tier three the iconic tier four gives you damage to rallying garrisons which if you're mainly open field fighting this is literally not going to do anything for you at all and finally tier five iconic is nice you know if you get hit with a basic attack you have a chance to get five percent counter attack damage for two seconds but that is a very small buff right five percent counter attack damage for two seconds only two seconds is it nice yes it's nice but you basically have to pay the cost of tier four and tier five to get just one benefit as opposed to two because this is not a benefit to you unless you're rallying or garrison lead with that being said uh going past tier three for the hope cloak is extremely expensive for very little upside this would be the last thing that you would get to tier five okay same thing with the gloves half a percent troop capacity is nice uh, one way to look at that is it's about half a percent all damage right if your troop capacity as a whale is really high and you're maxing crystal tech then you could value this at like one percent all damage okay so that's that's roughly how i look at it in my head it's napkin math that's kind of how i see this now seeing red which is the bonus that you get from tier five gloves for infantry gives you a 10 percent chance to gain three percent march speed for three seconds and stacks three times that's whenever you take damage so you're only going to guarantee get three stacks which is nine percent march speed if you're being swarmed right because you're taking a lot of hits and it's only a three second buff and then it falls off right so like I don't like this passive this buff is really not that good to be honest with you so it's really not even worth getting it's so expensive to get there once you hit tier four for the gloves like you're pretty much done I would recommend like you don't really need tier five for the gloves to be honest with you okay so which order should you then be focusing on upgrading the iconic tiers well first of all you have to ask yourself what does it mean to focus on upgrading an iconic tier well what that means is probably getting the blueprints right like that's going to be the bottleneck uh, you are going to get materials passively over time it's pretty slow but you can get them from events you can get them just from like, like manufacturing them in your in your blacksmith right again I understand it's very slow but it is guaranteed to happen the blueprints are the piece that you have to focus on okay now if you think about the hunt for history event or you think about blueprint choice chests you do have some ways to choose which blueprints that you want and so when we say which iconic tiers should you focus on upgrading first what we're really saying is which blueprints should you be prioritizing getting so that way you can then get the iconic tier upgrade eventually okay I think the number one priority and this is probably going to be for all troop types by the way is going to be the weapon the weapon gives you literally if you look it literally just gives you more for the iconic upgrades now the downside is the first upgrade is attack which is not great but beyond that it is just straight up a better piece to increase the iconic level four now it will probably cost more materials but if you're going to prioritize getting blueprints for anything it would be the one that gives you the most benefit right i mean i mean that makes sense the second priority i think would actually be the boots whether it's whether you went with shio's return or if you went with the the set boots the reason that i think boots are such a high priority for increasing the iconic tier for is because you get more march speed okay and for infantry that especially that matters the most at the fourth upgrade tier you get five percent march speed and then at the fifth upgrade tier you get another five percent march speed when you're outside alliance territory plus one percent defense which is nice also the first iconic tier for boots gives you health which is I mean you right away out of the gate get a really nice upgrade there which is huge infantry defense at the second level is okay it's fine and then at iconic tier three you get 300 troop capacity that is smaller than some of the other ones here but it's also worth noting that it will be cheaper so I mean that's that's something you can consider but really you're doing it for the March speed after that I would say helmet takes next priority that's because you get some base defense points which is nice you also get some infantry health here some troop capacity and damage to field troops which is great also basic attacks have a 10 percent chance to give your next skill damage plus five percent that's really good five second cooldown that's amazing that's also you know with Liu Che it's nice that he's gonna proc this more often but he doesn't do skill damage but 
CPO will if you pair them together. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Then I would say prioritize gloves after that. Really, there's nothing special about gloves besides the troop capacity here, which is nice. But the reason that you would leave chest and legs for last is because we talked about this earlier, but the best in slot for chest and legs are the Hope Cloak and Eternal Knight. You're actually going to get these blueprints passively over time, if you're lucky, from the Crystal Keys. And also, in the case of the Eternal Knight, you'll get it from the Lost Canyon Shop. So, there is at least a guaranteed way of getting those blueprints so you don't have to choose those in things like hunt for history right it, like there's just no point or opening you know your blueprint choice chest you wouldn't ideally want to pick those because you already have a, a way of getting them passive over time I know it's going to be super slow I'm not going to pretend like it's easy to get them it's not easy to get them but at least you know you can get them whereas things like the set pieces you know you have to pick those from a choice chest or get them from an event or something like that now before we move on to cavalry the last thing that I want to mention here is when you're thinking about like okay let's say hunt for history comes around should you be focusing on getting you know your your infantry weapon all the way up to iconic tier five as the priority for example and then move on to something else i think really what you want to do you want to flesh out three sets three good sets one for infantry one for cavalry one for archers and once you have this set done then start to think about what iconic upgrades are going to be the most beneficial for each of those sets okay because if we're being real like it's gonna take so long to get iconic tier five on everything especially as a free to play or low spender it's gonna take you such a long time so if you say okay like i'm not even gonna do anything else until that one set is finished you're literally just gonna have one army for years okay so really you want to focus on getting full legendary sets first with some accessories and then you want to focus on iconic tiers then special talents and things like that that's years down the line okay next we're going to move on to cavalry and this is pretty much the starting point for cavalry in my mind okay you have the two-piece vanguard set which gives you two percent bonus a cavalry attack and also the halberd gives you a ton of stats as it is they're all tanky stats which is which is amazing it's defense and health which is beautiful and you'll see here that the total breakdown of stats is quite high for having two greens and four blues like it's wild okay so this is the starting point for calves it's a very uh, low bar for entry probably the easiest set to build for beginners out of everything we talk about in this video so we love to see that from here eventually you're going to replace your chest piece with a purple chest piece with a talent you're also eventually going to get the purple boots with the talent and the purple gloves with the talent these are three really solid purple pieces to be honest with you guys we have a nice spread here of attack defense and a little bit of health but that's going to change very very soon overall this is a really good early to mid game option to use still rock the green pieces because you get a significant amount of stats there eventually you will replace them with the heart of the saint and the gladiator this gives you a bunch of defense this gives you a bunch of health and it's it's Gucci we're feeling good about that now probably the first legendary you want to craft here is the boots for two reasons first of all it replaces cav attack with some health and you can see here that health shoots right up and also you could put an iconic crystal into it and that will give you base health is is great I mean that's pretty much the best choice you can get here so that's why you would go for that one and then eventually you would replace the chest with the set piece chest now you'll have a two piece set bonus and you can see here we again replaced uh, one stat for health which is great also you get defense from the chest piece iconic crystals so that's nice next i would replace the helmet with the legendary set piece helmet this also would give you three iconic defense base stats which is really nice and it literally just has more stats than the blue helmet right i know the blue helmet is really good it gets you good value for a long time but objectively like the golden helmet's just better so you would replace that once you're here converting these purples into legendaries really gives you a very small benefit i would say you would want to either do the gloves or the weapon next the gloves are going to be much easier but the weapon is going to get you the four piece set bonus for cavalry so if you can technically it would be better to do the weapon before the gloves I know you're looking at the cavalry attack and saying ew attack stat I know but like technically it is better trust me I love heart of the saint I'm still rocking it on my Nevsky okay I'm a big fan but it is what it is eventually you will prefer the 20 percent attack on the Lance of the hellish wasteland with the three percent counter attack damage that you will get from the set bonus and eventually you will replace the gloves with Navarre's control that is the piece that you can get from the crystal keys which is really nice that means that you don't need to worry about getting the set bonus here that's right we are not going for a six piece set we are going for a four piece set now eventually your set will look like this and if you look at the stat breakdown here the reason that the Lance of the hellish wasteland actually works even though it's cavalry attack is because you have 
so much tanky stats here for cavalry that you really start to notice a benefit from that bump and attack stat. you're just outputting a lot more damage which is really nice at this point you would start to work on your iconic tiers and then eventually you would work on the special talents the boots chest and weapon would be some of the priorities for the special talents and then eventually you'll get the rest as talents as well now technically if you are a giga chad mega whale you can go for the pride of the con helmet and the sacred dominion for the weapon and this is just going to give you more stats in the long run but really like the payoff there it's it's really expensive okay it's just really expensive so technically this would be probably best in slot for everything but again unless you're like a mega whale cav main progressing through the iconic tier system with two kvk pieces is going to take a really long time okay so and that's even for whales so if you're not a whale and you're a regular player you know it's even going to be hard to get the set pieces to be honest with you like to progress through the iconic tier system even the set pieces are going to be pretty rare so you're better off getting the set pieces unless you know you think you're going to be maxing this in five years from now like this is just a more reasonable a uh, goal to have i think unless you're again super well now infantry had a free-to-play friendly alternative Habs really don't they they really don't because there's really no other pieces that you could replace for a crystal key piece that would be a good idea right like the chest if you replace it with shadow legion you're getting a horrible stat trade in the total buff department and same thing with the boots like it's just not good so unfortunately if you're a free to play cavalry main you do kind of have to go for the four piece set bonus that's pretty much the only option good news is that the ash of the dawn and also navarre's control at least those are crystal key options so we love to see it here we see all the bonuses for increasing the iconic tier for all of the equipment pieces for cavalry and you'll see in green once again are the open field pvp recommendations that i'm making again i know sacred dominion and pride of the con are technically better but if you're not a whale good luck getting to tier five for both of them like that's just insane okay so this is one of the things where it's like yes it's best in slot on paper but will you ever actually get there if the answer is no you might as well just you might as well just do the ones you can get that's my opinion now just like with infantry you know if you're going to be prioritizing obtaining blueprints which blueprints should you be prioritizing well one thing to note here is that there is no pieces that give you bonus damage to rally or garrison like we saw with infantry right we saw that on the chest piece for the chest piece for cavalry it's actually damage to field troops which is actually pretty good so unfortunately there is no early stopping point for the chest piece for uh, cavalry there is however sort of an early stopping point for the gloves and that's because tier five gloves you know they say when you deal skill or smite damage you have a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's march speed by three percent for three seconds can stack up to three times this is a three percent slowdown it goes up to nine percent but it's only when you deal skill or smite damage so first of all smite damage for calves confirmed pretty much right like why would they even put that in there for calves if it wasn't going to happen eventually second of all stacking up to nine percent march speed debuff is not really worth it this is extremely expensive to get here and you're going to be applying these stacks so slow that how could you ever get to three stacks unless you're unless you're I, I i actually don't know i have no idea right so end of the day this isn't super worth it but everything else you could take to tier five and get good value out of it as far as priority for the blueprints go though i would say once again the weapon is probably going to be your first priority again it's more expensive to upgrade but you do just get more for those upgrades so to me it makes the most sense and also at tier five you have a 10 percent chance to gain five percent damage for two seconds that's basically well it's one tenth of a ring of doom so yeah I mean even that's not like anything crazy right ring of doom is 10 percent chance for 50 percent damage for two seconds with a five second cooldown so yeah really expensive stuff there but the troop capacity is nice the two percent damage to field troops is nice ignoring enemy defense is fine beyond that again boots are probably second priority just because again march speed is nice and the base health stats is really good as well then i would say chest piece would be a, a third priority for me because again just straight damage to field troops troop capacity ignoring enemy health and you also get the base defense which is good shattering strike is fine five percent counter attack damage it's okay very very expensive to be honest with you but it is okay fourth priority i would say would be the helmet you get the base defense you get cav attack is not that important but troop capacity damage to field troops is nice 
and at tier five you get five percent bonus skill damage which is it's a ten percent chance but that's actually that's pretty good and I think right now is a good time to just point out that like a lot of these tier five upgrades are micro optimizations they are not like they don't really feel game breaking to me the fact that like tier three gives you a lot of bonus troops when you add it all together it's like that feels like it's going to move the needle a little bit more than some of the tier five upgrades in my opinion finally the legs and the gloves because we're using Navarre's control and Ash of the Dawn these are once again blueprints that eventually you will get them from the crystal keys it's going to be very slow and it's going to take a very long time but when you're you know doing a pick one chest you know why would you pick a blueprint for something that you know on your next crystal key you could just get it right like so I know I know it's gambling I know it's not guaranteed I know the probability is low but of all of them I would say these are the ones that you're going to have the most of by default anyway finally we move on to archers and this is going to be sort of the starter build for archers that you can be working towards okay we have two green pieces three blue pieces and one purple piece and that's just because there's really no other great option for the boots for archers I guess you could just use like the gray boots like literally like the basic white boots like you could just use these until you're able to get your hands on the purple ones that's my recommendation but this is kind of the first build you should be focusing on as a new player when you're building your archer set we have a breakdown of 24 percent defense 19 percent health and zero attack which we're gonna get to in a moment that will change from here the thing about archers is that they actually have a purple set that is very rare there's literally no other purple set in the game besides the gathering set there is the knights pieces which technically aren't a set apparently based on what i see in the game but anyway eventually you'll just upgrade everything to purple with the talent okay you're gonna get the four piece set bonus from the revival set you're also gonna get the golden age weapon which is nice you get some archer defense and you can see here that this archer set is very heavy on the defense very light on the health and in the middle for the attack the first two pieces i would change would be the the chest to get the set chest and the gloves to get the set gloves and the reason for this is because you're going to lose the four piece set bonus as soon as one of those changes so you might as well change two to get the two piece set bonus for legendary and here you can see the health stat is looking a little bit healthier here which is nice no pun intended next i would recommend upgrading the weapon to the set weapon now we're again going to talk about the kvk pieces in a second but the reason that i would recommend replacing the weapon next is because it lets you keep the two piece set bonus from the revival pieces and also you have health on the epic boots and the set piece boots give you defense so that's kind of a trade-off whereas going from golden age to the dragon's breath bow is just an upgrade it's straight up an upgrade right so of all the choices that you have this is the one that is just straight up an improvement so that's the third piece that i would go for eventually you'll replace the boots as well and that's going to give you the four piece set bonus and then finally you will of course do your legs and your helmet this is a full six piece archer set we have no pieces from the crystal keys that is why i did archers last in this video because there's really like there's no well there's one free to play alternative but this is like the best in slot that i would go for if i were you this is what i'm going to be shooting for as somebody who doesn't really care too much about my archer army but like this it, to me is the best set that you should be aiming for this is the point that you would start to work on the iconic tiers and then eventually you'll work on the special talent years from now and that would be mainly for the chest piece which would be important the weapon and the boots as well and then finally the helmet legs and gloves now again if you are a giga chad mega well, then of course you can go for the two piece KVK items. This will remove your six piece set bonus, but you'll be getting even more stats for that. So this is what you would go for. If you are rally or garrison lead, God bless you again, like something being best in slot on paper is very different from it being attainable for most people. I think like special talented helmet weapon, like this is, this is so hard to get that it's I personally am just going to stick to the set uh, pieces for my account. Now, when I said earlier that there's a free to play alternative, what you could do if you're okay with losing the six piece set bonus in favor of easier to obtain blueprints, by the way, the six piece set bonus is Archer health, right? So like, there you go. That's 5% Archer health is pretty good. But um, I do understand that, you know, for free to play players, it's going to be hard to get a six piece set bonus. So you could do the Milky Way chest and you could do the facets of the war god for the legs now 
the reason that you would do this is because both of these pieces give the same stats as the set piece equivalent so the chest piece set is 11 percent archer health milky way is 12. task of the war god is 12 percent archer attack whereas the set piece is 11. so you get basically this is two percent more stats but you lose out on five percent archer health for the six piece set bonus the advantage being that these two pieces you can get for free from the crystal keys and other ways so this is an alternative that would be acceptable in my opinion but if you have the choice again I would go for the set pieces why wouldn't you right like the set bonus is really nice and finally we have all of the tier upgrades for archer equipment now as you can see here in the green are just all the set pieces basically that is cut and dry pretty simple stuff that is what I would recommend that you aim for for open field PvP and luckily just like with infantry the chest piece doesn't really have to be progressed past tier three once again we have damage to rally and garrisons and you don't really need that as a free to play player low spender whatever so tier three chest piece is pretty much done yes you do get a chance for counter attack damage on the tier five but that is a very small upgrade for a very high cost okay so not really worth it in my opinion or at least save this for last okay and finally gloves same thing here i think for the tier five upgrades it's befuddling below and this gives you a 10 percent chance to reduce target march speed by three percent for three seconds stocks up to nine percent not really worth the five tier five like that's a crazy expensive upgrade for a mild debuff it's nothing crazy so if you wanted to stop at tier four i think that would be completely fine once again half a percent of troop capacity at the end of the day i would value at about half a percent all damage maybe a little bit more than that so that's okay at least and then since there are no free to play pieces that we're using here at least in the ones that i recommended of course you could replace the chest and legs we already talked about that but you know if you're gonna go with what i recommended before then the order that i would recommend obtaining the blueprints in if you can would be first of all weapon once again you get more stats for it you might as well go for the weapon the blueprints are the bottleneck here so grab that when you can next you would go for the boots as well okay the boots really are for the march speed again like this is for every piece Boudica Juge Leong at the time of recording this is what a lot of people are using and the biggest complaint with that is that it's slow because Juge Leong has no March speed so if you really need March speed for for your marches and this goes for infantry as well you could prioritize boots over weapons if you wanted to like if you really cared most about getting that March speed at tier four go for it that's fine you also get the base health here which is great if you're going the six piece set route then the next thing I would focus on would be the legs because this is going to give you the base health stats which is nice troop capacity 1% damage to field troops then I would go for the helmet afterwards because you get health defense bonus stats which is okay troop capacity and again damage to field troops then finally I would do uh the gloves and chest last again that's because their later upgrades are not that great to be honest with you of course this changes if you're going for the tacits of the war god instead as well as the milky way the chest again would still be the last choice here because you will be getting it for free but the order would then change to uh weapons then boots then helmet then gloves then legs and then chest at the very end now I do want to say if you are going to go for some of the kvk pieces here I would recommend first of all hopefully you're doing it for calves or archers it makes more sense for them a little bit less sense for the infantry because they lose the march speed on the four piece set bonus but I would recommend focusing on the weapons first I think that makes the most sense again the blueprints are going to be the bottleneck here and yes the weapons cost more to craft than the helmets but they give you more stats so I think the weapons are the first priority then you would go for the helmets afterwards but really uh, I think a lot of people should be just focusing on using these coins to probably get some inscriptions here okay like hunter inscription is great if you're building towards a smite damage set you would want to get the destructive inscription as well so that's something to consider I want to address one last thing specifically with both the cavalry weapon and helmet as well as the archer weapon and helmet for archers I recommended a six piece set for in infantry I recommended a four piece set and for cavalry I also recommended a four piece set and you might be thinking like okay well for like cavalry and especially for archers like maybe not so much infantry because they need the march speed but for calves and archers like shouldn't you really be pushing people towards the kvk pieces because technically like they do have more stats like it just makes the most sense to do that that is technically the best choice and I kind of alluded to this throughout the video but the reason that I didn't do that and of course you can do that if you're ambitious and you you have the the means to do so then by all means go for it but 
the thing with this new iconic tier system right if you first of all crafting these cost the same number of legendary materials as the set pieces of that category so they've reduced the entry cost so to speak for the kvk weapons and helmets but the downside is that you know when you go to convert an iconic tier one kvk weapon to iconic tier two you need a blueprint and 30 legendary materials whereas if you were to do the same thing for a set piece you would need a blueprint and 20 legendary materials right and so right out of the gate it's going to cost you more for iconic tiers two three four and five all of which also require a blueprint and then on top of that you still have the special talent system and if you're unlucky you're going to need another four blueprints for that as well so you're talking about eight blueprints of a kvk weapon or helmet to max out that piece right to get iconic tier five to get full refinement you could get lucky of course you could get lucky with a special talent but when we're looking at like needing eight blueprints plus the one to forge it right that's nine kvk blueprints and you would need that for the weapon and for the helmet for that piece so 18 kvk blueprints for one perfect cavalry march is insane it's insane right like so like how many kvk blueprints can you realistically get in a year it's not that many right regardless of how active you are and how fast your kingdom registers for a new kvk it's gonna take you years to get that for just a single army right which is insane so when i'm thinking about like this video and and the how this video will age over time the most realistic unless you know this could change they could give us more ways to get the kvk items that's you know completely fine but unless that changes like it's it's this really is going to be super hard for most players to max that out and so i'm much more comfortable recommending pieces that players can get their hands on more frequently right i think i mean i don't know i would get bored trying to get the perfect kvk sword if it takes me two years right like i don't know man that's just me so i just wanted to address this really quick like yes kvk pieces that that is best in slots but i would say unless you're a rally and garrison leader who is a giga mega whale i wouldn't really worry about it that much okay now the last thing we have to talk about is accessories i think a lot of people ask about what are the best accessories to use i think personally that the ring of doom and horn of fury pretty much an open and shut case for open field fighting these just make the most sense ring of doom is literally more damage and horn of fury is literally just a faster rage cycle and it also gives you the chance of firing your active skill before your opponent on that first turn which is usually crucial because then you get debuffs off typically before the opponent and so that matters a lot now of course if you're using somebody like Liu Che, you might consider something like Greatest Glory or Karak's War Drones or something like that. But for the most part, Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury make the most sense and they're extremely versatile. You can put them on basically any army and you'll be good to go. The real question is when should you craft the legendary accessories, right? Like, should they be the first legendaries that you craft or should you craft them much later? Or, or like, when should you actually craft them? The truth is that ever since the original Iconics came to the game where we got base stats, it seems to be like it is most important to craft your accessories last, which I know that doesn't sound intuitive, but ancient stratagems with the special talent is kind of like the poor man's ring of doom. If you guys don't know troop capacity, like the number of troops that you have is directly proportional to how much damage you're doing. So having more troops is literally having more damage. It is that's just it's black and white and the silent trial is great it doesn't have the same perks as horn of fury for example but it is nice to know that you are slowing down the enemy's rage cycle and if you run silent trial with the special talent and the ancient stratagems with the special talent on your armies you can pretty much get away with that until your entire set is legendary now you don't have to wait until you get special talents on legendaries or progress through the iconic system or anything like that but if you are able to add iconic crystals to every slot to besides Besides the accessories slot that's going to be probably your best bet now I will say as you come down to like the last one or two purple pieces in your in your loadout then the lines start to get blurred a little bit as to whether or not it would be better to go for the accessory then or to not truthfully I used to think that it was important to craft these legendary accessories very early on but that advice has just not aged well that's just not the case it's better to have full legendary everything pretty much now is crafting these things early bad no it's not bad I mean you're gonna 
gonna have these pieces for the rest of the time that you play rise of kingdom so i don't want you to feel bad if you crafted these i've crafted them very early on in my account but if you're still rocking ancient stratagems and silent trial that's fine don't let the whales peer pressure you okay now this probably goes without saying but when it comes down to like you know should you craft another ring of doom or should you start to increase the tier level of your existing ring of doom i would say it makes the most sense to craft a ring and a horn for like all of your armies first before you even consider about increasing the tier level the iconic tier level of these items because like you get the base health for just the iconic crystal which is great an entire blueprint plus materials for just one percent troop health is not that crazy one and a half percent troop capacity is nice but then here at tier four we have two percent damage to rallies and garrisons which unless you're a whale player you're not really going to need that anyway and then finally divine might does seem decent but it is very rng heavy so yeah i mean i'm not saying this is bad but like really the accessories are so expensive that you really just should focus on filling the accessory slots with legendary accessories first and who knows you could get the special talent when you craft those which would be really nice okay i told you guys this would be a super long video if you made it to the end i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kings players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kings video and while you're down there let me know what you think about the new iconic tier system in rise of kingdoms i would love to hear from you guys and with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace